F Stops Simplified, a practical guide to photography. In photography, understanding the concept of F stops is very important. Why? Because all measurements like shutter speed, aperture, ISO are done in terms of F stops only. Without going into technical details of F stops and over complicating things, Let's study a typical scenario to understand the concepts. Suppose you want to take a nice photograph. After composing your camera to take the picture you must ensure that the exposure is right. This will happen automatically in auto mode or can be achieved manually. When the exposure is correct it will show inside your camera's viewfinder or LCD display. Normally cameras can show up to two stops underexposed or two stops overexposed settings. For proper exposure, the three parameters, shutter speed, aperture and ISO must be set at a particular combination. The important thing to notice is that there are many possible combinations of these settings that will result in same exposure. In case you don't know in terms of stops, increasing shutter speed decreases exposure, as there is less time for the sensor to capture the image. Increasing aperture also decreases exposure, as the lens opening becomes smaller. Though increasing ISO will increase the exposure as ISO is a measure of film sensitivity and the more sensitive the film is the more easily it can expose with the downside that a high sensitivity sensor will also pick lot of noise. Now let's go back to our example, suppose you get correct exposure at a particular combination of settings. Don't bother about the exact values for now. But suppose you want to change the shutter speed to control blur or maybe change aperture to control depth of field, what should you do? Of course you don't want to change the exposure, so how do you do that? Take for example, you want to increase shutter speed by one stop to reduce blur, because your subject is moving very fast. If you remember previous discussion this will reduce exposure by one stop. Your photo will now appear dark. The only way to compensate is using aperture and ISO. Now if you reduce aperture by one stop it will increase exposure by one stop such that net exposure becomes unchanged. The increase in exposure due to aperture will cancel out decrease in exposure due to shutter speed and your photo will remain perfectly exposed even under new settings. Now suppose you don't want to increase aperture. This can be because you want a shallow depth of field. You can still control ISO to get the right exposure. If you increase ISO by one stop it will increase exposure by one stop, and again net change in exposure is zero. In fact you can change both aperture and ISO without changing the exposure in a wide variety of ways. For example you can decrease aperture by 0.5 and increase ISO by 0.5 and your net exposure will still remain same. Or, you can try something even more drastic like increasing aperture, by 2 stops and increasing ISO, by 3 stops and you still will achieve the same result. This time increase in exposure due to ISO compensates for decrease in exposure by both shutter speed and aperture combined. It is all a game of simple arithmetic and capabilities of your camera. All you need to do is remember this simple chart. Increasing shutter speed, decreases exposure. Increasing aperture, decreases exposure. And increasing ISO, increases exposure. Rest is all simple arithmetic in terms of stops. Now you should check your camera settings and manual and figure out F stops increments. This could be one stop, half stop or even one third stops. In first case one turn of your control will will result in change of one stop and so on. This way you know exactly how much your parameters change when you turn the control wheel. Let's go to some details now. ISO, which is sensor sensitivity. It is expressed as a number usually starting from 100. 
Every stop increase in ISO is equivalent to doubling of ISO number. So 100 to 200 is one stop. 200 to 400 is another stop. 800 to 3200 is two stops. The important thing to remember is high ISO, means high noise. Let's go to shutter speed. Shutter speed is expressed in seconds. A fast shutter opens for less time, a slower one opens for longer time. In terms of stop, increase in shutter speed by one stop is same as decreasing it by a factor of two. So shutter speed of half second is one stop more than shutter speed of one second. Similarly shutter speed of 1 by 4000 is 1 stop faster than 1 by 2000, and 2 stops faster than shutter speed of 1 by 1000. You may notice that some of the speed on your camera will not be exactly half but close to it like 1 by 15 and 1 by 125. This is merely for convenience as it results in good round numbers which are easier to remember. Again important thing to remember. Fast shutter results in freezing of time and slower one results in blur. Now coming to aperture which is always a little confusing. Aperture is the opening in the lens. It is expressed in F numbers. Like F4. Which is same as saying F by 4. At first look. F numbers may appear random. But one stop increase in aperture is same as increasing F number by a factor of square root 2. This weird factor of square root 2, comes naturally as a result of underlying physics of lens. So F1.4, which is root 2 times F1, is one stop more than F1. Small F number means a large aperture and large F number means a small aperture. So F1 can allow huge amount of light. While F32, will be like a pinhole camera allowing very little light. So, small F number, means large aperture and lots of light. Large F number, means small aperture and very little light. Another thing I did not mention is that a large aperture, or small f number will result in shallow depth of field and very little will be focus. This may be desirable in case of portraits. While a small aperture, or large f number will result in large depth of field in which everything is in focus. This may be desirable in landscapes. I hope this presentation is helpful. If you like it please like and share. Your comments are always welcome. For more information please visit aptnk.in.